Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Good Bit Podcast. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for tuning in to hear us chat about another classic film. Here on the podcast where actors chat about their favourite movies and my goodness, the movie we're chatting about this week I actually think goes under the radar in terms of like actual enjoyment in terms of like how people actually feel about this film and the franchise i think it's loved a lot more than is let on this is pirates of the caribbean the curse of the black pearl starring of course johnny depp orlando bloom and keira knightley an incredible film an incredible cast and an incredible guest ladies and gents no it's not alfred hitchcock's film marnie which i've actually never seen and i have on dvd and i've never watched but maybe because i'm joined by marnie thompson this week maybe i'll finally watch that classic hitchcock film we're not chatting about the hitchcock film this week though of course it is about pirates marnie lovely to see you thanks for coming on the podcast finally how have you been how's your summer been what's been going on Good, it's been really good. Uh, I'm just back from Disney. I went to Paris. Nice. Um, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have much planned for the rest of the summer. Well, I'm, I'm going to London, but that's only for a couple of days. And then You, you say this, I'm only to going to London, it's only for a couple of days. You're going for like this really exciting reason. I know, but compared to Disney, it's not as exciting. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to London to go to the Harry Potter studio tour. Very so nice. I'm very excited about that. I've been I've before. I've been before uh, a couple of years ago, and it was really good. So I'm dragging my boyfriend to go see it. That sounds great. I would love to go see it. Um, and what is what is your favourite Harry Potter movie? Like, is, obviously, everyone's got, like, a ranking system. Have you read the books? How do they hold up to, to the films? So I read the books... Oh, I don't know how old I was. I was really quite young, but I only got so far. I think I only got to, like, I don't know, the fifth book. Mm-hmm. But I have to say the third movie is my favourite, Prisoner of Azkaban. It's got to be the All most the popular one, right? I think so, yeah. I love yeah. it. Love what's your, uh, what's your, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> what's your Harry Potter house? Oh, uh, I'm a Hufflepuff. Oh, nice. My sister's half up. Just not on purpose at all. I've got my Ravenclaw mug here. Just... Uh, <laughs> that was a horrible, like... Uh. You're a Ravenclaw? Yeah, I would think so. I think so. Of course, yes. Well, it says I wisdom, it. learning and wit. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's good. Yeah, it's I good, couldn't uh... even tell you what Hufflepuff is. Right, well, we'll Google it. You've... You should know this. Hang on a minute, right? Harry Potter. Huffle. I can't remember. Hufflepuff traits... Okay, uh, loyalty, patience, hard working, strong sense of justice. Mm. I don't know about patience, but I'll take that. <laughs> Sometimes you I can't wait the for quiz. the movie to finish. <laughs> <laughs> I did the quiz on, um, oh, what was it called? Hogwarts Legacy, the new, the oh, new yeah. game. I did it on that, and I did it on, do you remember Pottermore? It came out years ago. Yeah. I did it on that as well, Hufflepuff. Yeah. Well, I didn't like Pottermore because it just always gave me like a different one each time. And I was like, I just want a bit of consistency. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I wanted to be Ravenclaw because I wanted it to be blue. But like, then I was like, oh, well, it's, you know, about wit. I could be witty and stuff. I was just trying to like get, you know, sell myself on the house. But I got all the other <laughs> yeah. ones as well. It just depends on the day of the week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But oh, yeah. It's a throwback. What, uh, I know Pottermore, I'm sorry. Oh, are you on TikTok at all? Do you use TikTok? Yes. Yes, There's like a nostalgia mm-hmm. page thing, and I don't know if you've seen them, but it's like um, it's one of those TikToks where you can swipe through different images and stuff. And there's like this tune playing, and it's all things from your childhood, and they've just been popping yeah. up all over my TikTok recently. And it's so funny, like swiping through some of them and seeing like oh uh, MSN and Bebo, and uh, what I saw the other day was Mini Clip, which was a website you could go on in school and play games. I don't know if you did that, oh, but I like I was, that. and there was like a mm-hmm. game called Run. And helicopter and all these things, and you could. I was like just having a total flashback and nostalgia kick on oh. TikTok. <laughs> I used to spend all my evenings on MSN and Bebo, trying to get my Bebo profile looking good, good skins, good music. Right, <laughs> Bebo was so controversial because you had to pick your favourite friends, didn't you? I know. Yeah, and that was a bit. Yeah. Caused some conversations in primary school. You couldn't just say my yeah. favourite friends are Ross, Rachel, and Joey. You had to say real people. <laughs> I know. Oh. Dreadful, dreadful. Um, all right, well, so 
Well, you, I, I totally glossed by the fact you said that you went to Disneyland Paris. I also was at Disneyland Paris at the start of June this year. I couldn't believe how warm it was. I don't know how the weather was when you were there, but like I just assume when it's like summer holidays, if you go to Spain or like Tenerife or something, that's when it's going to be really sunny and hot and like you get a tan. My God, Paris was roasting. How was it when you were there? Well, you must have got all the sun because it was absolutely torrential rain. <laughs> oh, when I was no. There. It was thunder and lightning, um, puddles everywhere. I had these baggy trousers on and they stuck to me all day because they were soaking wet and I had to buy one of those stupid looking poncho things, like the big <laughs> plasticky things. Um, but other than that, it was a great trip. I really enjoyed it. Good. Did you just go to Disneyland or did you manage to hit any other touristy parts around Paris? So we had two days in Disney and then on our last full day we had a wee tour around Paris, Eiffel nice. Tower, the Louvre and stuff like that. That was really nice. I've never been before so it was quite it was quite enjoyable. Yeah. Seeing all that stuff for the first time. I just thought there was too much, you know. <laughs> Wait, I say that as if it's like a fault, it's not a bad thing. But um <laughs> Like, so for example, we had two days in Disney as well, and I actually think we could have done a third day because there was so much to mm. kind of um, kind of take your time to go through. Um, yeah. But then also we, we planned to just do one day doing a kind of city tour. We'll do the hop on, hop off bus thing. Um, yeah. And just there was 10 stops on the bus, so we thought we'll just do the 10 stops in one day, the easy days. But we just, <laughs> everything is so big, there's so much land you have to walk <laughs> to go and do these oh, big yeah. landmarks and stuff. And then we went up the, um, what's the big. The big, not the Eiffel Tower, the other thing that's really tall. The, uh, the Ar- Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe, right? We went up there first, mm. right? Which is great. Oh, well. Um, and you walk in and you've got no choice but to walk up like 300 steps. Like, obviously, it's one of the oldest buildings in the world or whatever. There's no lift. <laughs> it's like the Pavilion Theatre. Yeah. Um, and you walk <laughs> in <laughs> and there's just stairs, you know what I mean? And then that's the staff's yeah. fault, apparently, because there's no lift. Um, and you just as soon as you walk in the door, the first step is right in front of you. You get no choice. And my poor mum, and just be having to walk up and up and up and up and right up to the top. And there was loads of space. It was really nice. We got pictures with yeah. like the Eiffel Tower in the background. Um, oh wow! And then later in the day, we went to the Eiffel Tower. Now they do have a lift because they're obviously more modern, but it's so much more busier, and there's l- yeah. less space at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Once I was already up the Arc de Triomphe, I felt as if like I should have just went to the Eiffel Tower because it kind of took away from how high up you were, like the views you can get and the kind of spectacle of being up the Eiffel Tower, you know? Um, yeah. So you probably did the smarter thing just doing the Eiffel Tower, just getting that big experience, you know? We didn't actually go up. We, uh, oh, you didn't go up? No, we, we, we walked around the full thing um, and then walked up to... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. But it's like a viewing platform, like, mm. over over the river. And then you go up and you get a really, really good view of the Eiffel Tower. Nice. I can't remember what it's called now, that's annoying. Um, I don't know how I would feel going up though. I'm all right with heights, but I think that's pushing it a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, yeah, I could probably, yeah, bring my dinner up or something. <laughs> up. I'm going to Google how tall, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? I understand what you mean. Okay, so it's 984 feet. That's probably taking the piss a little bit. You know what I mean? Hi, maybe. Uh, I like heights, but it was it was ridiculous. Obviously, if you yeah. get, you can't even go up a certain you know flight of stairs or whatever, or even in an airplane, you might not have any chance of going up the Eiffel Tower. But um, mm-hmm. nice you got to see it, though. Ah, yeah, that was beautiful. It was very very busy. Uh, mm. My dad was a bit gutted because he he obviously was there years ago, um, and it's all cor- cornered off now, so you can't go under it anymore. It's got these right. massive big like, um, glass walls, I guess, um, just to stop, you know, the terrorists, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah kind of that kind of mm, yeah takes away great. from like the beauty of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Um, so, what about actually in Disney? Did you go on any of the roller coasters or the mad rides? Why? Oh, are you I into that pretty stuff? Much well, I was a wee bit nervous because I've not, I hadn't been on a roller coaster since the last time I was probably in Paris, and that was, I think it was maybe like eleven, twelve, maybe. Wow. Um, so we went on Thunder Mountain to mm-hmm. see to see if I could handle it, and then I went on pretty much everything after that. It was you great got fun. the worst one out of the way first, and you said, "Okay, I can do this now." <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I'd say the worst one was, uh, did you go on Indiana Jones? Yes. Yes, I didn't like that at all. I came out. I came off that with a headache. I think it my head was rattling, rattling about. It? <laughs> it totally rattles you. And that, yeah, that took like an hour and a half waiting to get on that oh. as well. That was such a long queue. Honestly, the waiting times were so annoying. Um, mm. And obviously, as as I said, obviously I was maybe lucky. I don't know if I was lucky, but with the really hot weather. Obviously, that made it worse because you're just standing out absolutely burning, you know? Um, but it's funny, I got um, I got bad news whilst I was in the queue for the Indiana Jones ride. Um, oh, no. And then, like, so it just totally affected my enjoyment of... <laughs> oh, no, that's horrible. The whole time I'm just sitting there, just miserable. Just the whole time on the ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't get a photo taken on that. You'd be, like, all grumpy sitting. No, I know. They probably did take my picture. Um, I thought um, a couple of them... I don't know if you went on the... Did you go on the Star Wars one, the Hyperspace Mountain? Yes. That was my favourite one, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. That one, and there's an Avengers one, right? In, like, the <gasps> Avengers campus. And they were great, but they were, like, in darkness. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I kind of wish you could see more. I went on the Avengers one three times. <laughs> I didn't mean to go on it three times, but um, we were with, like, different... We were with, like, a group of us. Yeah. And... Um, they all wanted to go on it at like different times, so I was like, "Oh yeah, I'll go on it again." So I went on it three times. <laughs> but yeah, that was, I thought that was you were going to say you didn't mean to go on it three times, but you just were standing in the wrong queue. I thought that was Indiana <laughs> Jones. <laughs> That's probably something I would do anyway. <laughs> I like the Avengers. It was just over too quick. I thought it was finished too quick. Yeah, I love yeah. I love the music. I think uh, was it the Star Wars one? You could hear the music like in on mm. the seats, like the Star Wars music. Mm-hmm. I thought that was brilliant. I that was really cool. That. There was another like um, Star Wars ride, but it was kind of like, oh, kind like a simulator thing. I don't know if you went on that mm-hmm. one. Um, I yeah. can't remember what it was called, but that was really good. So I actually would have been on that more than once. That was a good one. But just the waiting times yeah. were so long. Um, I, I probably know. standard, isn't it? Like between forty and seventy minutes. That's probably standard, but like it just seems a long time. I think so. You know. Yeah. I know. It takes away from it, but. I know. It's good fun. It's good fun. There's only so many times you can have the same conversation, you know, standing in the queue. I wonder how long this one's going to take. And then you look at your phone. Oh, it says yeah, 35 yeah. minutes now. Oh, we're going to be five minutes later. So, um, but honestly, yeah, I had, was had a constantly great time. on the app. Yeah. The app. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshing it, to see oh. what's nearby. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I would de- definitely recommend. I would love to go back um, mm-hmm. and just do take some more time, I guess, to do it. But we tried to pack a lot into like four days. Um, which was fine. It was just a really yeah. busy holiday. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but yeah. I felt exhausted after it. I felt as if I needed a break. Yeah. I I, um, I added up all my steps, and I can't remember what it was, but it was like over 80,000 steps we did in like three days or something. Like mental amount. So much walking. But it doesn't feel like it when you're there. No, I know. I know. You just Because everything's happening, it's like quite distracting, you know? You just feel like that kind of keeps you going. But you know how they say like um, mm-hmm. you're supposed to do 10,000 steps in a day? to like maintain mm. like your fitness or whatever i saw something recently it's like oh well now you only need to do four thousand to remain fit and i was like oh, people yeah. are going to take that and run with it or walk with it um but <laughs> like four thousand is is much lower than ten thousand i think you need to do more than four thousand steps a day for god's sake who do you think you are yeah. <laughs> i tried to aim for ten thousand i'm I not very so. good at it yeah. i bought one of those um like wee walking pad treadmill things mm. so i just i just walk on that and watch Grey's Anatomy or something on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's put it in front of the TV. That's actually a great idea. I've seen yeah. people at the gym, like with their phone mm. on the treadmill and they're watching like a Netflix show or something. I always just assume you listen yeah. to music, but that's actually probably a better idea to kind of distract you. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's good. It, it takes your mind off it and then as soon as an episode's done, you're like, oh, I've, I've walked 5k. <laughs> that was really easy. I didn't know I could run a 10k. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, maybe I should, I've got a, I got a bikini to get into because I'm going on holiday in November. So I need to make sure. Oh, are um, you? Yeah, going to Lanzarote with all of Iona's family, which will be a good laugh. Um, wow. <laughs> oh, well, I look forward to it. Um, okay, so, I mean, when did I first meet you? I met you a couple of years ago, I think, 2021, I think. Is that when you started in class? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you were in my partner's yeah. oh, well, class. We, we, we knew each other beforehand, though, did we not? Did we? Pavilion? Was it Pavilion first? I think, oh, no. I think I started Pavilion just after you started N-Clan, because I think Iona told me, yeah. oh, someone's in, in my class, works at Pavilion, and I knew everybody in the class, but obviously you had just joined, so I didn't know you. 
I think that was what, I, what it was. Yes, that was it. Yeah. That was it. Mm-hmm. So we, we never actually were in the same class, but we were at the same work. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the pavilion together, which was... Uh, I just feel like loads of Scottish actors always at some point have worked at the pavilion. <laughs> I think so. A lot of Enclan people as well Yeah, have been working front of house, yeah. How's it going? Has it been so nice it, recently? It, yeah, it's been going good. Uh, it's busy, a lot of shows, yeah. a lot of shifts. Um, but yeah, not much has changed, it's all... Because it's, it's so kind of a bit of a, a rebrand, hasn't it? It's been bought over. So um, I guess maybe that's why mm-hmm. slightly more shows are happening there, which is probably quite exciting. I think so. It's been taken over by Trafalgar Theatres, which is um, an English company. I, I think they've got another theatre up here, and I'm not too sure. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been busy. A yeah. lot of like different shows that we've never had before as well, which is quite good, which is bringing in... Lots of different customers now. Yeah. Um, still get the same, like Peter Powers, which is on at the moment. Classic. He's still there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been going good. Have you had any, like, really, like, horrendous experiences with an audience member? Because we're front of house and you work behind the shop, don't you, a lot of the time? Yeah, yeah. Um, have you had any crazy moments from punters? <laughs> Not that I can think of. Nothing directly with a customer but there was there was one time during a panto um it was really really busy it was i think it happened in a matinee and we were tidying up getting ready for the evening show Mm -hmm. so the full audience had had left and we had these big bin bags and we were putting the like all the litter in picking up stuff and I was talking to someone and I put my hand down and picked something up and I thought it was a crisp packet, but it felt really squidgy. And I picked it up and it was a full nappy. Oh. Someone had changed their baby on their lap and left a full <laughs> a full nappy <laughs> on the floor. And it was crazy and mental. We've had a lot of very toilety kind of dramas, which is quite... <laughs> Yeah, you don't expect that in a theatre, but we have. No, you um, don't expect that in a theatre, but it happens at the yeah. pavilion. It happens at the pavilion. I know. I know. It always happens there. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of months ago, um, we had someone who had maybe a bit too much to drink and he threw up on the floor mm-hmm. um, and it was just at a corner and this woman came scurrying around, slipped in it, went arse over tit and landed in it. It was all up her back and she was in tears. She was in floods of tears. And uh, we couldn't get hold of her. I think she was with her partner or someone or a friend and we couldn't get hold of them because the show was still going on and didn't want to disturb a full row to get them uh-huh. out. Um, so one of my colleagues very kindly <laughs> cleaned her back and like got her all freshened up. But that was... That was that was pretty vile. What do you, what do you mean you couldn't get a hold of her? Like she fell in the theatre or in the foyer, but No, she fell like in the I don't know if you can remember the, the stall shop. There's like a wee kinda like corner before yeah, you go down yeah, that yeah, corridor. Yeah. Uh, she fell there, but our friend was in the auditorium oh, watching no. the show. So we we didn't want to like go in and like disturb a full <laughs> row of people watching a show saying, Excuse me, your mate's just fallen in projectile vomit. So Oh um, that's disgusting. That that yeah, and you could smell it like oh. you know you know when you get that stench and it stays in your nostrils for like hours? <sighs> it, that was that was Pretty not bad. a good night. Pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have anything like no, that. Um no. It's more so just when, when people ask you to do something or whatever and then you just, like, I mean, that's a good example, cleaning sick off someone's back. That wasn't in the remit when you apply for that job, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you may have to direct people to their seats, tell people where the toilets are and clean sick off people's backs. Like, that doesn't happen. Um, so it's more so people who just ask you to do stuff and you feel as if you need to go, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you can't, you have to give good service, of course. Um, I know. It's just an interesting clientele. It's always very interesting and... Um, Going back a couple of times this year to see some friends uh, in a couple of shows, which will be funny to go back as a as a customer to my former mm. <laughs> place of employment. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I'll, I'll, I'll look out for you. I'll come and see you in the shop. What are you coming to see? Coming to see. Uh, she's I'm Noah Billy. She's a Tim, um, oh, which is yes. in September. 
um, my mate Dion's and that. And actually, funnily enough, I was through at the fringe uh, last week, I think it was, and I went to see my mate Jack in a play, and then we all went for drinks after or whatever, and just like sitting at the desk where we were like having drinks, I was just talking to this this person that I'd never met before, a female actor. I was just sitting chatting, and I was like, oh yeah, so like, what have you been up to? She's like, oh, I'm doing I'm No Billy, She's a Tim with someone called Dion Fratty. And I was like, no way, what a small world. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I made friends with her, so we're going to see both of them. Uh, and then we're going to see <laughs> When when You Were Young, When We Were Young, uh, what if, whatever it's called, Geezer Break Production show. Oh, yes, John's in that as well. Dion's in that, Jack and um, Jack Bishop, which is a stage name, mm. which is weird to call him that. Uh, he... <laughs> When I met him years and years ago at NCLAN, he was like, oh yeah, guys, like my dream is to perform at the Pavilion. Because that's where he went when he was wee, to see Panto and stuff. So it's yeah. just nice for him to kind of have that moment. So I'm going to go and, oh, gonna go and support tragic. him. Take a wee post. Oh, really? so, yeah. <laughs> nice. I've actually taken, I've taken the night off on... Oh yeah. I can't, I can't remember what show it is. Uh, I think it might be like Saturday. Oh no, I think it's the Friday night of She's No Billy, She's a Tim. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go have, come and see it. So I'll be sitting in the audience instead nice. of okay, several cool. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had judging the other members of staff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've obviously seen, I saw the original version, or not the, not the first ever one, but I did see the original Billy and Tim, so it'll be interesting to see what they've done with it this time. So it's going to be really good. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm excited for, for it. When, yeah. um, when did you decide, when, when did you get started when you were wee to decide to become a performer? I always say... Can't you say it? Oh, what are you doing when you're an actor? You know, but you do so much. You know, um, when when was the moment? What did you do when you were a wee? Did you do any shows? Did you go into any uh, community theatre or anything like that? I didn't actually. Um, funny because we were talking about the pavilion. My mum was an actor, and mm. she did a lot of work at the pavilion. So I think going to see shows with her in it kind of like sparked something. I guess. Yeah. Um, she she helped me get my very first like role and that was in Motherwell. I did a little Christmas show back in like I think it was like two thousand eight or something. Nice. Um I was quite young and I <laughs> she played my grandmother in it. Which <laughs> I don't think she was too pleased about. But uh, yeah, after that that was uh, that was only on for one night and then on the drive home I was like, Oh, can we do it again tomorrow night? That was really fun. So I think that's when I kind of got the bug yeah but um yeah watch watching my mum i think that's where it started that's where the yeah. spark came from it's always really sad isn't it when you do yeah. a really good you have a really good time and it's only a couple of nights or a couple of days run because obviously some shows are going to go in for two three weeks you know but you want to do more that's always a good sign you know that you want to continue with a show mm. yeah because it was such a long rehearsal process as well you get mm. so um connected with like these actors that become like your grandparents or your mum or your brother um, and then it's all over in one night and you don't get to experience that for another couple of nights which yeah. would have been great but um, so, that, yeah. was that, that was the moment that was the moment um, how was it you probably get this question all the time obviously your mum was very famous in this country um, and take the high road <laughs> um, What? how was it for you like I don't know how young you were when she was in the show, but how was it for you? Was it when you were around when she was? When did that show finish? Two thousand three, I think, it got cancelled. When? Yeah, what was the deal with you when you were when you were wee? Uh, so I remember. What do I remember? So it cancelled in two thousand and three. Cancelled since it's such a bad word. I shouldn't say cancelled. It just stopped. It just finished in two thousand three. Well, I think it got rebranded. It was. Uh, take the high road and then it got changed just to high road got you but I can't remember when that was Uh, so I was eight when it finished Mm. Um, what do I remember from it I remember always I remember scripts scripts Mm. everywhere in the house and I would always like doodle on them and make wee notes for her Um, I don't think I ever I'm trying to think I don't think I ever went into the studios with her Mm. Because that was the old STV studios before it got moved down to the Clyde. Yeah. Um, I think it's now Tesco Bank or something. No, <laughs> the building. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. I remember one time. I don't know how old I was. I was. I think I must have been. I don't know five or six, and I would watch her uh, every night with my gran having my dinner on the TV, but she would also be out filming. As right. 
I was watching it. So I, I thought that that was actually happening right now. So I yeah. thought what, what I was watching on TV was live. And she had this storyline where she got in a car crash and she killed a sheep, I think, or she 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 swerved to miss a, a sheep. I can't remember. But um, in it, she was covered in blood and like she had passed out in the car. I was bawling my eyes out because I thought it was real. Yeah. My gran was like, it's, it's not real, it's just tomato sauce, it's okay, it's not real blood. <laughs> um, I remember that. And I remember getting really jealous because she had a baby in Take the oh. High Road. And I was like, oh, who's that baby? That's not yeah. <laughs> But that's all I can really remember. You're just sitting there raging, like, where did they get that video of me? How did they get me as a baby? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. It's so funny when you're wee, you're so innocent, like, you just think everything's real or everything's happening right now, and, yeah, it's funny, like, even just in movies when you see, like, a really, you know, what a, a favourite character or whatever, you know, um, getting into a shouting match or getting into a fight or something, you just feel so, oh, God, I hope they're okay, <laughs> you know? I know. Um, I was like, I'm a big wrestling fan, so especially when I was wee, I'd be watching it and like the wrestlers would be bleeding everywhere and stuff, and I'd just be like watching it, just like my mouth open, just like, what is going on here? <laughs> Why is no one helping them? This is crazy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I only can... found out fairly recently that uh, wrestling is, I don't want to say scripted, but it's like planned. Yeah, you only found it recently? Uh, I'd say maybe in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it might have been Grado's family wrestling bash at the pavilion. I was like, "Oh, that's 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 not real. Yes. They're they're pals in real life. I know them." Well, no, wrestling wrestling is theatre. It's just another type of theatre. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just I feel like I've always known. You know, like that the breaking that kind of like um, not not the breaking the curse. What's I've just watched Pirates of the Caribbean. Breaking the curse. Um, breaking that kind of like stigma or, or the the illusion. That's what I'm trying to say. The illusion of thinking mm-hmm. it's all real and stuff. I, th- I feel like I've always known that it was scripted. Like even when I was a wee boy, like I've been watching wrestling since mm-hmm. 2001, 2002, something like that. Um, wow. Every week <laughs> to this day, um, I've just always known. But it is funny because people always say, I think the thing about wrestling, I can't believe this is turning into a wrestling podcast. I'm very sorry, Marnie. Um, <laughs> sorry. But the thing with wrestling that always makes me so passionate is because people think they're being kitted on, right? People don't like to be made a fool of, right? Hmm. Whereas I'm like, no one no one in wrestling, in the business, is trying to kid you on. They, they, they're not being all, you know, you, you buy this, by the way. Like, it's very much yeah. like, you know, this is what the, the situation is. We're all aware of it. We're all just we're all in on it. We're all just supposed to go with the flow, you know, and that's how you enjoy it the most. People don't like it because mm. they go, oh, well, it's all fake, isn't it? It's all fake shite. But, you know, it's um, if you go to, you know, the pavilion and go and see a panto, you don't go, oh, this is all fake, by the way. They're actually really pals. Oh, yeah. That baddie's not actually a bad person, you know? It's the same yeah. thing. But people get quite passionate about that. I think it was because when I was younger, I used to get, <laughs> going to sound really stupid, I used to get mixed up with boxing and yeah. wrestling. So I thought it was the same thing. And I was like, oh, no, they're actually competing. Mm. So, uh, weird. I, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't get that in my head for some reason. Like Strange. now it's like uh, UFC. And that's like the new thing. It's like UFC or mm. MMA. That's all meant to be like maybe the same as wrestling but that's real when wrestling's not and, and things like that you know yeah. um, but then wrestling's still an Olympic sport like it's in the Olympics as like um, amateur wrestling which is where oh, you would do yeah. like takedowns and stuff which is real and you get points for your takedowns but then WWE which is on the TV and that's all the scripted stuff that's professional wrestling as it's called yeah. maybe that's what I was getting mixed up with yeah, yeah maybe. it's easily done <laughs> it's easily done um, <laughs> I just, you can tell that I care quite a lot about it um, <laughs> all right. Do you remember like when uh, when you were? I keep asking when you were wee, but do you remember when like the first time you said this is my favourite movie? Like, what was your first favourite movie? And because does it kind of line up with the first time you ever went to the cinema? Do you remember that time? Uh, hmm. Probably two you know, different I was questions. To think, so I was trying to think about what the first movie was, and I should have asked my dad because I don't actually remember the first time I went to the cinema. Yeah. But my earliest memory of being in a cinema was going to see Jurassic Park, oh, that's which a good probably one. wasn't probably wasn't a good <laughs> film to take a child. <laughs> right. But um, I remember being in the cinema with my mum and my dad and my friend. So there was four of us, 
and my friend got really, really scared and she had to sit in my mum's lap and I was like, it's not that scary. But I kind of want to sit in my mum's lap too. So I was like, oh, I'm really scared. Um, but yeah, I, I, that and maybe Monsters, Inc. I remember going to see Monsters, Inc. in the cinema. Yeah. Um, Monsters, Inc. was, was really the first film I ever saw in the cinema as well. Monsters, Inc. <gasps> I totally really? remember it. Yeah, I remember it so clearly. Yeah, it's so weird. It's one of those memories that's like stuck in my head. And I remember me and the other kind of kids that were in the cinema were like running up and down the steps in the <laughs> cinema during the film. If I was in the cinema now and that happened, I'd be furious. And I'm just sitting doing it when I was like four or whatever age it was. But yeah, Monsters Think was my first one too. Snap. Please. Yeah. But the first time. Mm, so I was trying to think about this as well. The first time I ever saw Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. I remember thinking, I love this, was when, um, right, this is going to sound really, really bad, and I don't know if your family has this person, but in my family, it was my uncle, he always used to get dodgy DVDs before <laughs> films came out, Right. so I think Pirates of the Caribbean was still on in the cinema, mm. and he gave my granda the DVD of it. So we were at my nanny and my granda's house and we watched Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, it was the best. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like a boy, like a boring boy film for some reason. Um, but it's turned out to be like my comfort film. Yeah. I watch it all the time. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, how was the it's quality been... of the film? Like when, like, does it just film with like a <laughs> camcorder? <laughs> I don't actually know how he got it. I remember Pirates of the Caribbean and Finding Nemo was another one that he always uh, gave us. And there was a couple of other ones, like Chicken Little, r- random yeah. random films. Um, I think the quality was all right for its time, yeah. probably. I think we, we obviously now we're spoiled with everything being like 4K and all this stuff, you know what I mean? But like back in the day, when we had these like small TVs and stuff like that, like they were perfectly fine. <laughs> they yeah. were normal at the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I'll always remember that. I always remember sitting on the couch with them all, eating, I don't know what we had, crisps or something, popcorn. Yeah. Putting on Pirates of the Caribbean, turning the lights down. And it was just, it was really, really cool. And then I went home and I was like, Mum, this is a really good day. Uh, this is a really good film. We should go get it when it comes out in DVD. Um, le- legally, obviously. <laughs> um, we should go and find a guy who can burn yeah. these discs for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. On the black market. The black market, yeah. And again, yeah. segue for the Pirates Caribbean. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I had I didn't have anyone in my necessarily my family who did that, but I definitely knew someone that got these like dodgy DVDs, and it was all the Star Wars films that they got me, um, and that's how I oh, saw yeah. Star Wars for the first time. Um, which is crazy to think about because it's like probably my favorite you know movie franchise now. I can't imagine watching it like in a dodgy way. But it was at the time, mm. you know, I, the reason I wanted to kind of watch them all was because all my friends had like the lightsabers and stuff and I wanted to be like them. So, oh, I, yeah. I, and obviously we didn't have the DVDs, so we just, I just somehow, someone I knew managed to, or my dad knew, managed to get them all in these dodgy DVDs. It was that and the Saw movies, which I've still never seen, but um, I wasn't allowed to watch them at the time. So, yeah. No, I've actually, I've never seen um, Star Wars. Never, ever? Never seen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. None of them. My my boyfriend he loves them, and I said that I would watch them with him, but it's just I don't know. It, it's it's not my cup of tea. I I understand, <laughs> right? But I think you should these big films, whether it's be whether it's Pirates of the Caribbean or Indiana Jones or you know Marvel or anything like that. I just feel like we should all we should all try and see them. I'm really bad for this as well because there's like these big films that I've never seen. I've never seen Twilight. I've never seen, I've only seen The really? Hunger Games when I was very, very wee, or well, when I was younger anyway. Um, mm. Like these big franchises that I've not seen, but I feel like I should, you know what I mean? Just to kind of have an opinion on them, because right now I'm like, Twilight, ugh, no, I'm not going to watch them. You know, I don't like them, but I might, you know, I don't know. But I recently, I recently mm. sat down with Iona, my, my girlfriend, to watch, um, to watch Star Wars for the first time, and uh, she enjoyed them. Um, some of them were a bit long, I think, for her. Um, really, and she doesn't make. She says she doesn't mind long films, but she does. She talks nonsense. Uh, <laughs> and you know, there's these big moments, you know, in the film where I'm looking at her like, "Wait, do you see this moment?" You know, like here it comes, <laughs> and then there's just no reaction whatsoever. But it's because I know the film a lot, you know. So maybe your partner will probably yeah. be the same. She'll be watching you, being like, 
wait till she reacts to this moment, but you might not care. <laughs> no, I get like that as well. We, um, oh, I can't remember what it was, maybe a couple of years ago during COVID or something, uh, I had watched most of the American Horror Stories mm. and I've my partner that. wanted to watch them. I recommend it. They're really good. Well, the first few are really good. Yeah. Um, so I watched it with him and I, I was like looking over going, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> wait until you see this so i was doing the same so I, I know the feeling it's weird watching someone else watch a film you know you ever mm. seen jaws oh years ago yeah we, we did it from a media class in high school oh, cool. but that was the only time there's a moment in jaws where um they're underwater and they're investigating like this uh, crashed boat and like a head of someone who was obviously stuck on the boat comes out of a window and it's like a big jump scare moment. It's like one of the most famous kind of right. jump scares, right? And every single time that happens, whoever I'm in the room with, I'm not watching the screen. You need to watch the person who's <laughs> watching it because you want to see them jump, you know? I saw it in the cinema and I was like, well, here it comes. And then I still jumped as well. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I didn't expect that. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it's funny. It's funny watching other people. It's just, it's strange. People are so strange. Um, and speaking of strange, I don't know if you would call Pirates of the Caribbean strange, but it is one of those films that just is always, I always came out in 2003, but it's always kind of been there. It's always on somewhere. It's obviously you, mm -hmm. someone may have the DVDs or it, now it's on Disney Plus. And I don't know if you know what I mean by this, but it's just one of those films that is just um, ingrained into people's heads, you know, yeah. uh, whether it's because it's a big kind of blockbuster or it's because it's got big actors in it or whatever, but... It's just one of those spectacles that is, you know, becomes comfort films, you know. Um, and you said the first time you watched it was when you were younger. Um, when I asked you to pick a favourite film, this is the one that you came back with straight away. Why why Pirates of the Caribbean, particularly the first one? Why is it such mm -hmm. a favourite film of yours? I think it's because it has so many, like, good memories t uh, yeah. towards it. Like, I remember watching it with my family. Um, I remember going on the ride before the film even came out going on the ride in Disney and loving that as well. Because was that in Paris it's, it's or was that America? It must have been America. I think mm. I went to America first. Right. Um, and that was that was well before they had like Jack Sparrow animatronics in it. Um, but so, I, so I, I knew the ride and then when I found out that it was based on the ride, I was like, oh, I can't, I, I've been on that. Like, I know that. Like, I've got a connection to it. And... Um, See, even in high school, when I was studying for my hires, I would put on the soundtrack and just right. listen to the music. The music's beautiful. Like, I am obsessed with, with the music of it. Yeah. It's brilliant. Um, and I think maybe Pirates of the Caribbean was the first time I kind of thought, oh, I want to do that. Mm. Like, I want, uh, like, that's my big, ultimate, unachievable goal <laughs> of being in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Right. It was just everything about it. Action, the music, the dialogue, like the, the set, the costumes, everything about it. Just loved it. Yeah, it's just a huge production. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, so, what, I mean, they're still making them. They're still making So, you know, the dream's still there. What, uh, do, you, what do you make of the sequels and, <laughs> and, and the other films? Do you like them as much as this one? Because I hear I've not seen... I've only seen the first two or three... Um, I've mm -hmm. not seen the more recent ones. I heard that they get a bit more kind of comedy based, or they just kind of kind of focus in on the, the funny aspects of it. What do you think? I think they do. I think the the two most recent ones, because um, there's five now. I think there? so. Yeah. Uh, the first three are brilliant. I love the okay. I love the first three. I like uh, Jack Sparrow, Will Turner, Elizabeth Swan. I like them. <laughs> um, but but the the last two get a wee bit um, far fetched. Okay. A bit a bit bit crazier. Still watch them. Yeah. Still still like them. Uh, music still brilliant. Hans Zimmer still still nailing it. Right. Um. But no, I do get that. It's it's much more comedy based. A lot of jokes. Uh, I, I say that like like it's a it's a bad thing. Right. <laughs> But it, but it's not. It's still, still good. Still I mean, the first films. one's first one's funny. You know what I mean? Like with some yeah. of the one-liners and stuff that Jack Sparrow comes out with. But um, mm -hmm. I guess I get. I, I've not seen the later one, so I don't know. But um, I guess sometimes 
in other films like that, say it's a Marvel film or something like that, like if they do play into the comedy a bit more, it's one of the reasons people moan about it. This isn't supposed to be funny, but it's you know it's meant to be an enjoyable film, you know. So there's nothing yeah. wrong with it being a bit funny, you know. Still um, good. St- I mean, listen, I'll watch them. I'll watch them, and I'll I'll, I'll judge myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know what you mean. Some things that kind of takes away from the actual. Uh, enjoyment. Mm. I mean, the fact you're saying they're far fetched. In this first one, there are like people who can't be killed and like turn into zombies and ha- fight know, with socks. I, I was thinking about that last night. I was thinking the first one's so realistic, <laughs> and then I watched it and I was like, "My night, it's not." Like these, these are skeletons sword fighting. Whereas I was thinking the more recent ones have like, um, like mermaids and zombies. Right. And I was like, "Well, it's still." Still eeksy peeksy, still the kind of same same thing. <laughs> right. Um, but it doesn't, again, it's not a bad thing. It's Because I, I don't know anything about pirate culture, you know? So who knows? <laughs> Me neither. Maybe on a boat somewhere, these these things are happening. It actually looks okay, like for 2003, because I, I mean, obviously 2003 isn't that long ago, 20 years ago, as opposed to other films with special effects and stuff. But um, around this time, and especially in big Hollywood blockbusters, there was lots of like really bad special effects. You know what I mean? Mm. Like there was loads of stuff yeah. that just looked silly. Um, I mean, there's the obvious classic ones like the Scooby Doo movie and stuff like that. You know, around this time. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. Like, see with like all the skeletons and stuff, they did a really good job. Yeah, that and the uh, Jurassic Park. Right. Aged well with with good CGI and yeah stuff. So yeah, some good films. Good yeah. films, Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many Jurassic Park films? Because obviously they moved to Jurassic World. Um, but I think there was three or four there's... Jurassic Parks. So there's three Jurassic Parks and then three Jurassic Worlds. Okay. Three so Jurassic six, Worlds? I thought it was only two World. Jurassic Worlds. All right. Uh, that's another one that's just going to keep being made. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so this is Johnny Depp's kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say his breakout role because he was obviously a very famous actor at the time. Um but do you think this is like Johnny Depp's most iconic role? Because obviously he's been in the news a lot in the last few years and stuff. We're not going to try and, yeah. you know, relate to that. But this is a whole different aspect of his life and his career. Do you reckon this is his most iconic role? Um, I'd say so. I think yeah. so. When you think of Johnny Depp, you think of Jack Sparrow. Um, I went through a phase of being totally obsessed with Johnny Depp. Yeah. I had every one of his DVDs out on display alongside a framed uh, autograph from him mm. on my bedroom shelf. I had a massive like A3 poster of him dressed as Jack Sparrow in my bedroom. And uh, yeah, I just loved him. I loved him so much. Yeah. I wanted to like be his pal. I wanted to work with him. I just yeah thought he was brilliant. What, was still it? do. I still really admire his work. I know, but... I know. It's just kind of a awkward, bit, isn't bit it? Touchy, yeah, yeah, like these things happen. There's like Kevin Spacey recently as well, you know, it's like he's been charged with 19 counts and he got not guilty for them all. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a touchy subject, but that that was when I was really, really, like I was a teenager. I was, I was going to say, like, is this this obsession with Johnny D, is this because you just thought he was cool or was it like a celebrity crush aspect of it? You know what I mean? There could be two different things. <laughs> uh, maybe a bit of both. I think that's fair. Uh, yeah, and uh, I don't think there's not. I don't think there's one movie of him where I didn't think, "Oh, he's good looking." <laughs> I think every movie he was like, "Whoa, oh, he's handsome, isn't he?" <laughs> he is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's he's totally iconic in this role, obviously, and. You know whether or not it's, it's it'll go down. You know, in the rest of his career, is the most kind of famous thing he's done. I think it will do, considering the fact twenty mm-hmm. years later people are still dressing up as him. You know, for Halloween and like totally going for it though. Like the costumes that you see are just ridiculously detailed and stuff. You know, yeah. um, it's all the wee quirks and it's all I can only imagine are kind of improvised moments in it where he's like doing wee looks to the camera or looks behind him and wee jumps and wee comments and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what makes him stand out. It's kind of what makes him so electric to watch. You know, because you never know what he's going to do. Um, yeah, I just think I think he's brilliant in this film because, you know, I, I was watching a wee kind of review thing about it as well on YouTube, and the guy said, you know, the first time you see the Jack Sparrow character, he's um very like majestic and there's like a shot over his shoulder and it pans round and he's like his hair is in the wind and he's been hit by the sun and stuff. He just looks so majestic, 
and then the camera mm-hmm. pans out and he's just on this wee boat <laughs> and it's not as mm-hmm. majestic as you think and he doesn't say anything it's such a good shot it's such a good moment right he doesn't say anything but you yeah. immediately know the type of person the type of character this is it's just based on that you know maybe because he's yeah. trying to be something that he's not you know you imagine that he hears this kind of majestic music in his head and that's how he mm-hmm. lives his life you know um which kind of makes it so iconic as a big fan of johnny depp what are some of other kind of your favorite performances and characters that he's done over the years can you remember um willy wonka I love... <laughs> oh willy wonka mm... i like that one mm... if it, i mean if it's on itv i'll probably watch it i'll put it on put it on in the background yeah but uh i love edward scissorhands mm. i love tim burton anything that tim burton does uh I uh, yeah, soak it up. He's brilliant. Yeah. Um so Edward Scissorhands is probably probably a good one. Good Halloween. Yeah. Watch. Another yeah. total iconic another total iconic uh, Johnny Depp performance, Edward Scissorhands. I forgot about that one actually. That's probably fair. Yeah. Um sticking with Johnny Depp then, he was nominated for Best Actor for this movie in two thousand and four. Um but it was ultimately won by Sean Penn in uh, Mystic River, which I've not seen. Never even heard of it. Oh, no, I've not, I've not seen that. No. Um, but isn't it funny, because I feel like now, I'm sure it was like this as well, but back in back in 2004, but like you wouldn't imagine a film like Pirates of the Caribbean being nominated for Best Actor or Best Picture or Best Director, you know, because these are always like for the really arty films now, you know, yeah. but back in 2004, this was the same year as Lord of the Rings, that was nominated for about 12 awards. I know mm. a kind of like sci-fi kind of fantasy franchise um, and it was yeah. also the same year as another pirate movie called Master and Commander have you ever seen that one? Oh, no, never even heard of that one me neither mm-hmm. and it was on Disney Plus because someone who was going to come on the podcast that I actually haven't recorded yet it just kind of fell through the plans and stuff asked like what's you know the fa- favourite film we're going to talk about and she hit me with that one and I was like what? what is that? What? but it's on Disney okay. Plus it's on Disney Plus and I believe it's Russell Crowe um and it's uh, it's like a it's a pirate movie that came out the same year as Pirates of the Caribbean, so maybe that's why we've not heard of it because it probably just was overshadowed by this total, possibly. you know, Hollywood blockbuster. So yeah, yeah. I don't, I think a lot of people didn't have much faith in Pirates of the Caribbean because pirate movies have been a flop and yeah. not not many have had been made. So I think so I think being nominated kind of like. Gave a wee bit of boost in morale and got some sequels, yeah. sequels out of it. <laughs> it's just kind of turned into a kind of pop culture thing, though. You'd imagine, you know, why would it not get more popular? You know, the type of film it is and the kind of tone of it. You know, it's not meant to be really serious. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess people were kind of slating it because maybe it's supposed to be this real dramatic film, you know, about pirates yeah. and it's never going to go well. But it's actually a lot of fun, you know. And mm-hmm. I think um, when it first came out, critics like properly didn't like it. Like it got like bad reviews and stuff and now looking back you go what are you what are you watching you know well Depp yeah. wasn't very convincing well i mean i don't know what you're trying to you know do here but he's just playing a mad kind of ex- eccentric pirate you know he seems pretty convincing <laughs> to me <laughs> the fact that they wanted was it matthew mcconaughey they wanted as jack sparrow first and they wanted robert de niro as uh, barbosa like you, you just can't imagine like other actors playing those parts it's it's weird Matthew McConaughey it's, would have been too uh, serious for that, I think. Well. You know, Sorry? I think Matthew McConaughey would have been too serious for it. I think, anyway. That's probably me judging, yeah. but yeah. I think so. I don't think he wouldn't have been as fun as Johnny Depp mm-hmm. was. I don't think, anyway. But Yeah, definitely. Um, the director of the film, Gore Verbinski, that's a name for you, uh, <laughs> is, is obviously a very talented director and stuff, but he also made a film called A Cure for Wellness that came out a few years ago, mm-hmm. and I hated the movie. And as soon uh, as soon as I watched it, I was like, I'm never watching anything this guy has done, you know, again. And then I looked on IMDb yeah. and he'd done Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, what? <laughs> what are they? Two total, uh, total opposite films. Um, but what yeah. was that film about? I've never heard of that one. I think it was set in some mad lab and there's an actor called Dane Dahan. I think it's Dane Dahan that's in it. Uh, who I'm not a fan of. I don't like saying that I'm not a fan of actors if I'm trying to be an actor myself. But yeah, Dane Dahan... Um, I just don't like a lot of his films and uh, he was the lead and I think they're trying to find this kind of medicine to cure something um, in this lab <laughs> and it all goes it all goes nuts and it was just one of those movies that I just was checked out of and maybe I need to give it another watch because my mate that I was with really liked it 
Um, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. I'm not a big horror guy anyway. I think it was kind of supposed to be scary and kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, maybe Gore Verbinski was wanting to make it gory. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Good one. <laughs> terrible. I've been, I've been thinking about this too long. Uh, yeah, when I, in terms of Pirates of the Caribbean, I think the first time I saw it um, was a long time ago when I was really, really young. And I can't say that I've watched it every year. Or, you know, the way some people like make it part of their like yearly routine, like maybe yourself, you know, watch that as a comfort film, you know. Um, I guess the one that I did for that was like Star Wars and stuff. I didn't really watch Pirates of the Caribbean. It's only until the past few years that I've watched them again and properly been like, oh, these are actually really fun films. Um, and again, as I say, I've not seen the last two. But I remember Dead Man's Chest coming out in 2006 and just being like that being like the biggest film in the world at the time. I just remember hearing that all the time, every advert, every side of a bus was always yeah. that picture, that kind of opening, um, not the opening, just like the, the movie poster was on everywhere. So I feel like mm-hmm. I know that one better than this first film, but I think I prefer this first one um, because it just sets the tone. And I think I do that with a lot of franchises. I prefer the first, like the original, than any other sequels. No, you know? I get that. Yeah. the first one. Um, mm-hmm. I think the only, the only franchise that I would say I prefer the third Jurassic Park. Okay. I'm going back to Jurassic Park again. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is about the third one. I just think, I think that I maybe see, maybe I saw that one first for some reason. I saw the third Jurassic Park. I first. reckon that was probably in cinemas around the same time as this because I think the first Jurassic Park came out in 1993, so you probably weren't born yet. Mm. So you might have seen that one in the mm-hmm. cinema. Maybe maybe that was the one that I saw in the cinema and my friend yeah. and I got scared, but. Yeah, I do. I do like the third Jurassic Park. That's another one. That's another franchise that I would watch maybe, yeah. maybe twice a year. <laughs> don't don't be embarrassed. That I I watch uh, these <laughs> films all the time too, more than twice a year. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I think I prefer Shrek two to the first Shrek. I don't know how you feel about Shrek. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I would I prefer agree. that one. Um, I don't know Spider Man two. I prefer the third new Spider Man. Spider-Man No Way Home with oh, yes. Andrew Garfield uh-huh. and Tobey Maguire. Like, I, I prefer that one. That's probably my favourite Spider-Man film ever now, which I can't believe I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's, but I, maybe that's a bad example, but I'm just trying to think of other ones that I prefer the original film. Like Star Wars, for example, everyone pre- prefers the second Star Wars film, Empire Strikes Back, right? Yeah. So they're one of the greatest movies of all time. Whereas I prefer the first one because it's just it, it's the first time. I just imagine people in the cinema seeing Star Wars for the first time. And that'll be you this mm. year uh, when you sit and you watch <laughs> the Star Wars films. I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> I'll send you a message when I'm watching it. Yeah. I want to do, I want, really boring. Don't say that. But I, I want you to see, I want you to set a camera up and do like a, one of those reaction video things on YouTube and cut it all together oh. just to react into the big moments. And I bet you're just sitting there not reacting whatsoever the whole time. <laughs> Surface. Yeah. And then after the movie's finished, just go, that was okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, five out of five. Sorry, five out of five. I'll take that. Five out of five. Um, all right. So, big question here. This is the Good Bit Podcast. What is the best bit of Pirates of the Caribbean? What is the good bit of this film? Ooh. Or some of I your favorite moments. Say... Oh. oh, it's it's stuck between two. There's a there's a really good bit. I would say I think maybe it's like halfway through. Um, where Jeffrey Rush is like, you best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. Mm. You're in one. That's a good. That that's Great a good line. line. Yeah. Me, me and my partner quote that pretty much on a daily basis. <laughs> um, and then that whole like action sequence where um, Elizabeth Swan is like seeing the skeletons and the, like the dead for the first time, just getting thrown about the place. That's a brilliant scene. And. Maybe the last big fight scene. Mm-hmm. It's all the actiony scenes I love. I think I think they're just so well done. Yeah. So the so the so the last big fight scene as well when they're in the, when they're in the cave of yep. uh, gold. That was that's good as well. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite bit as well because you kind of you realize they can't die, and then when he stabs mm-hmm. Jack, spoiler, he stabs Jack. Um, <laughs> And you just, obviously you haven't put two and two together that he's probably got this curse too, you know what I mean? Because he's a pirate, um, yeah. so he can't die. Um, 
but then that that moment it does click you. You go, oh right, okay, you know he's going to be fine. <laughs> and then later on, obviously, <laughs> they try and break that that curse. Um, I reckon that's probably my favourite moment as well. That kind of last moment where uh, Barbosa and Jack Sparrow are having their kind of fight and they're all skeletons and mm-hmm. stuff. That totally changes when when Elizabeth Turner, I was going to call it Elizabeth Swan, um, it sees the kind of I don't call them zombies, but the dead versions of the pirates mm-hmm. for the first time. Totally changes the film because I'm just saying. You know, you think it is really realistic. This is something that could easily have happened. You know what I mean? Like, look at this kind of rogue mm. pirate that, you know, jumps from ship to ship and stuff. But then that's the moment that it goes, oh, wow. This turns into a total kind of sci fi kind of fantasy film. And that just takes up a level, yeah. I think, in terms of like production value. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, definitely those are really good bits. Um, we never even talked about uh, Kira Knightley. She was only 17 in that film as well. It's crazy, right? And doesn't she look, who does she look identical to? Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. <laughs> oh my god. And even a little bit of Daisy Ridley. I don't know if you've seen Daisy Ridley. Um, oh yeah, so maybe. Daisy Ridley. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, like, for the longest time I thought Natalie Portman was in love, actually. For the longest time. But it's not. It's it's Keira Knightley. Um, what did you make of Just her performance stunning. in Pirates of the Caribbean? I loved it. Love it even more, knowing that she was a fetus in it. <laughs> um, she was so young. <laughs> Um, apparently her mum had to be on set um, for each each shot that she was in because she was underage. Jeez. Um, but no, I, I thought she was brilliant. She's really, really good. Really, really good. good and really powerful. And you just don't imagine someone that age or whatever to be... To, you'd imagine they'd be quite intimidated in a big production like that, but it just doesn't come across until oh. I didn't know that she was 17 until like, like the, yesterday when I was researching the film for the podcast. Mm. And I was like, What? It's crazy. I know. Um, and then Orlando Bloom. She had to kiss. I know she had to kiss Orlando Bloom when she was seventeen. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even think I could look him in the eye when I was seventeen. I thought you were going to say I don't um, even think I could kiss him now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. I could. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that must be a big moment for her. I know. But I think he's great too in the film. Actually, he actually plays a really good kind of prince, yeah. doesn't he, Orlando Bloom? He does. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching it with my mum for the first time thinking that she would fancy Orlando Bloom but she was like oh no I quite like Jack Span I think it's the eyeliner <laughs> the eyeliner the hair the kind of uh, mm-hmm. flamboyant attitude I don't know there's just something about him though mm-hmm. the Jack Sparrow character it's just like you can't stop watching him and that's what makes it so iconic you know you can't stop watching him as a, as a character mm-hmm. um, but yeah no it's, it's really good uh, I love the film I kind of want to go through and make sure I finish the franchise now and watch them all. Um, I'll let you know. I, I, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll make a deal here, right? If I'm going to watch all these films, you need to watch all Star Wars and we'll keep each other posted. Uh, okay. So there's five Pirates <laughs> films, right? There's only... Mm-hmm. Two, 11 Star Wars films? <laughs> Is there? 11? Well, there, well, there's nine, nine of the story. Like the main story. Okay. And then there's Rogue One, which is set between two. It's set between Revenge of the Sith and A New mm-hmm. Hope. And then there's a solo, standalone solo film, which is set, I think, before A New Hope as well, played by a different actor. Oh, it's not Harrison Ford. Yeah. So do I need to watch it in chronological or order release? Okay, great question. Um, and I, this is a, <laughs> honestly a question I think about in my spare time. If I was to meet someone who'd never seen Star Wars, what would I say? And this is the moments here. Um, all right. It depends on how you're gonna, how you think you're gonna receive the films, right? Are you someone that quite likes watching older films? Are you okay with like dated films? Yeah, yeah. Don't bother me. Okay. And also, how much do you know about the story? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Mm-mm. Okay, I'll maybe. Uh, well, I know, I know, I know who Luke's father is. Right, here we go. This is nothing annoys me because this is the biggest twist in cinema history, and everybody <laughs> knows it. Everybody knows the spoiler. Um, that's that's the regret that I know. <laughs> All right, then, if you know that, then. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't even know. Okay, well, you can watch. I would say, um, if you want to, if you want to follow the story better, maybe start in chronological order, and start episode okay. one, and watch your way up. Because then you get the story okay. told to you better, right? Um, however, the first time I showed people it was I showed it in like release order, which is I know it's annoying, right? But it, it starts on the fourth one, 
But the reason it starts in the fourth one is because they just, that wasn't the plan. They just made the film, and then they went, mm. oh, well, we could tell the backstory on this, and they commissioned three prequels. So it became right, okay. four. You know what I mean? So it's just diff- it's confusing. But the release order is four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> That's the right. release order. So just if you want to just learn the story and watch the story, maybe just watch it one through nine. So the prequels, that's the one with Ewan McGregor. Yes, yeah, they came out after. So if okay. you once you watch the three prequels, one, two, and three, then you go back to nineteen seventy-seven. So wh- why I was asking about you not know, being like judgmental to like dated films is you can't go from like the really good special effects and the films from the two thousands and then go back and expect it in nineteen seventy-seven. You know what I mean? So it's I it's it's how you're going to judge the film. So it's mainly up to you. <laughs> okay, that's smart. Okay. Yeah. I'll 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 get back to you. Maybe in a couple of years, but... Years? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very simple story, but it seems people make it more difficult than it used to be. You know, it's just about... Oh, okay. It's about this young boy um, that has special powers um, and you learn about what those powers are, but you learn more about it in the three films before the first time you meet him. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. It's, it's very confusing. Okay. It's very confusing. But, no, honestly... I, I, I'm obviously teasing you don't need to watch them all just now but I'd love to know your progress if you're watching them um, okay and I'd love to know I'll, 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 I'll try my best how your how your partner finds it showing you because it's, it's something I was like there's a dream of showing like a girlfriend Star Wars for the first time you know <laughs> oh but okay. it's good it's good and then like the 7, 8 and 9 they all came out when Disney bought Star Wars and the 7th film came out in 2015 and they're great like they're like in terms of like quality, great acting, you know, special effects are amazing. The music's still there. Like mm-hmm. it's diff- It's definitely upgraded, you know, in the newer films because they're produced by Disney. Um, whereas yeah. people like the older ones because they grew up on them and it's more nostalgic and it's all kind of physical uh, CGI <laughs> rather than computerized CGI. You know, it's like practical effects and stuff rather than all done on a computer yeah. and a green screen. So yeah. Anyway, I swear this podcast mm. was about Pirates of the Caribbean, not Star Wars or Jurassic Park. <laughs> but <laughs> getting sidetracked of good films, it's all right. Slightly sidetracked, but yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else you want to say about Pirates of the Caribbean, or like, what? What? Um, what does this film mean to you? What? What is that that kind of makes it your favourite film? Um, what does it mean? I'm actually not too sure. I think I've. I think I've mentioned everything on why. Yeah, it might just be a comfort um, thing. Yeah. See see if I'm like scrolling on Netflix or Disney Plus mm. and we don't know what to watch and we can't or we can't make up our mind. Pirates of the Caribbean. That gets put on. I like it. And we know the script. We know the script inside out. So we're not even watching it, we're just <laughs> saying the lines. <laughs> saying the lines. That happens to be a few films yeah. as well. It's very annoying, but I do it anyway. <laughs> it's good fun. Yeah, it's like you just want to test yourself. You go, ah, see, I knew that line was coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know all the beats on the pauses and, like, the little, yeah, you know the, like, beats in between sentences? You know that, like that. Yeah. I've just been obsessed with the film, though. I just love it. It's like, you just feel like you know it so well. Um, it's almost like a kind of pride thing. Like, yes, I know this film very well. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, before I let you go, I'm going to do this thing. I've never done this before. I'm going to put... 60 seconds on the clock, right? And I'm going to yes, hit you okay. with some questions. I've written down a few questions. And don't think about them too much. Just give me the first answer that pops in your head. All right? Here we go. Uh, what was the last movie you saw at the cinema? Uh, Barbie. Nice. What is your comfort TV show? Mm, American Horror Story. Nice. What TV show are you watching just now? Grey's Anatomy. For the first time or rewatching? Very first time. Nice, that's a, that's a big one. I've never seen it. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Marvel. Favourite movie genre? Mm, action? Yeah, nice. Guilty pleasure movie? Oh god, I can't think. Uh, you can pass if you pleasure. want. Mm. Oh, God, I don't know. I'll pass. Okay. Uh, would you rather go to the cinema or to the theatre? Cinema. Me too. Uh, f- <laughs> Favourite animated movie? Uh, the Lion King. Nice. Favourite director? Mm, 
I'm going to say Spielberg. Nice one. Nice. And what... I'll give you this last one. I was going to skip this one. This might be hard. What is, like, the biggest film that you've never seen? Like, what's one of those ones that people go, wait, you've never seen that? Probably Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, maybe Star Wars. Uh, things like like Sophie's Choice and Schindler's List and... Ones that are always Glorious there. Bastards. Yeah. Yeah, like, these are ones that I should should be watching instead of Pirates of the Caribbean all the time. <laughs> no, not at all. You like Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> did you say Inglourious Bastards there? Yeah. We did that last week. That was last week's film on the podcast. So good. You need to watch Inglourious Bastards. <laughs> that, Inglourious Bastards and Jojo Rabbit are in my, my list that I really want to watch soon. Jojo Rabbit's great, yeah. That's a good one as well. Yeah. I've only watched that I've once heard, I saw it in the cinema things. and I would love to watch that one again, actually. That's a good shout. Um, yeah. yeah, do you watch, have you seen Tarantino movies? Have you seen like Pulp Fiction and things like that? Uh, no, I've not seen Pulp Fiction. I've seen like c- clips and like yeah. parts of it. Um, oh God, what's the one? <gasps> no, no, come, it'll come back to me. I can't think of it right now. Well, there's, um, there, is, there is one that I've seen. Django. Is it Django? Yeah, Django yeah. Unchanged. Yeah, that's, that's Tarantino as well. Iconic, but it's so good, but also... Really, I was going to say yeah, dark, not dark. Heavy. Yeah, really heavy. Yeah, absolutely. And Glorious Bastards <laughs> really heavy too, but really good. Yeah, I would definitely check it. I just rewatched it obviously the other day for the podcast, and I was like, yeah, this movie's great. But lots of subtitles. Mm-hmm. I watched it for the first time on a dodgy stream, and uh, they didn't have any subtitles, so a lot of it's in French and German. So you're supposed to obviously have subtitles yeah. on, and there was no subtitles. But I thought that was like by design. Like, you're not really oh, supposed no. to know what they're talking about. But it went on for about an hour, and I still had no clue what was going on. And I was like, I had to Google, <laughs> doesn't Glorious Bastards have something else? Yeah. So I had to go buy the DVD. So I did the right thing, you know. I've only seen that once. Um, I should probably watch it again. It, that was a good film. What was that? Inglorious Bastards. So. Oh, I thought you said that. Oh, no, not Inglorious yeah, Bastards. I'm getting mixed up. Django. Django. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Django's yeah. a good one. Um, all right, well, Marnie, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're welcome back any time if there's any other pirates movies that you want to watch, <laughs> or maybe if you if you watch that Master and Commander one on Disney Plus that no one's ever heard of, maybe we'll oh, chat yeah. about that. Yeah, I'll add that to my list. Yeah, I don't know how good it is. I can't promise you. Don't say that I recommend you this film because it might be awful, and I'm going to get the blame for it. But it's on record now. Messaging like Chris, this is shame. When did you say this? <laughs> Why? Why are you wasting my time? I want to watch pirates again for the seventy third time this year. Um, yeah but anyway thank you everybody for listening and for watching this episode of the Good Bit Podcast please take care of yourselves take care of each other and I'll see you all next time and I'll catch you all down the road baby bye